New registrations for electric cars increased by 70% globally between 2014 and 2015. China overtook the U.S. as the largest market, and the two countries account for more than half of that market. Today, I interview Tesla's John McNeil, president of Global Sales and Services, about the trends in the EV industry. Hi, John, and welcome to Money Magazine. Oh, you're welcome. It's nice to be with you. So how long do you think it'll take for electric vehicles, fully electric vehicles, to overtake hybrid sales? I think one of the things that's drawing uh, electric vehicle consumers to the market is both safety. There is concern about, electric, or about vehicle emissions worldwide. Um, and here in Hong Kong, uh, last year about 122 people died in automobile accidents. Over 2,000 died of auto emissions related lung cancer and lung disease. So actually the tailpipe of the car is 25 times more lethal than the car itself. And for that reason, I think we're going to see more and more pure electric vehicle demand increase. Policymakers want to have that happen, and I think uh, all of us that breathe air want to have that happen. But how long do you think it's going to take for pure electric vehicles to, to get there? Because you've got to change the mindset of car buyers. Norway is banning combustion engine vehicles just within a few years. As they took that step, then large industrialized nations like Germany and the Netherlands said, we're right behind you. Uh, and so they're now considering banning combustion engine vehicles. So obviously things like that are going to accelerate demand uh, very quickly. And as you mentioned, demand has already grown 70 percent uh, uh, just between 2014 and 2015. What happens then for developing markets that might not be able to afford these types of cars? We're bringing a, a lower priced car to the market, um, priced at, at uh, around half of our current price. What is low price? What is half? It's about $35,000 US, okay. um, with more than 200 miles of range. I think it's still expensive though for some developing countries, right? Yeah, and so we'll continue to work that technology and that price down, which is one of the reasons why we built uh, what we call the Gigafactory, which literally doubles the world's production of lithium ion battery cells. Uh, and so um, given that that's a key component of electric vehicles, we want to make sure that we are working as hard as we can to lower that cost. Uh, and then that lowers the cost of electric vehicles uh, worldwide. Tesla has also talked about uh, creating public utility vehicles. How soon is that going to be rolled out? Uh, short haul trucking is, uh, is a key uh, absorber of, of energy and a key polluter. And so that's one of the places we're looking to go next. So that would be like the first kind of public utility vehicle that's that would right. be out there. Yeah. Okay. And we may look at buses and other things as well. You know, you've got this whole charging issue and how yeah. long it takes to charge. Is that going to be resolved? Because how long do you want to wait in line to kind of not gas up your car, but charge up your car? Neither one of us would go to a public charging station to charge our phone because we value our time, right? We wouldn't sit there for the hour it would take to, to charge our phone. Much like that uh, with an electric vehicle, people are now charging at their home or their office. What we're seeing governments do around the world is start to now encourage charging at home and at the office. Although I know a few times when I've been like, could you please plug my phone in to charge it up? Yes, exactly. And so that's why <laughs> so. we put superchargers around uh, uh, all around the world. So we've got more than 4,000 around the world now. Um, because folks want to have that uh, safety net, so if, they, um, uh, so if they're driving and need a quick charge, they can charge to over 50% of the battery in less than 20 minutes. Do you think that there should be a move for um, the whole automobile industry to standardize so that when you do go to a charging station, you can just charge anywhere. You don't have to find your particular charging station. Yeah, and that's right. So we provide adapters for our owners to be able to go to any charging station. Um, and there are some uh, there are some movements around the world uh, to adapt standards. And China is doing that with their GB charging standard. But the industry as a whole, are you moving towards some kind of standardization when it comes to electric vehicles? Well, we want more electric vehicles to be manufactured. So one of the, right now, there are a limited number of manufacturers that are making pure electrics. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the encouraging things was the Paris Motor Show a few weeks ago. The entire show floor was electric vehicles. Right. So we see major automotive manufacturers that are moving in this direction aggressively, and that's good news for all of us. What are some of the things you think should maybe be standardized? I think the, the most convenient thing is, is national charging networks. And right now we're, the, we're, we're sort of uh, the only automotive manufacturer that's building them. And we welcome more in so that, uh, so that those national charging networks can be built out. There's a lot of talk about driverless cars. And I understand your cars have this capability. 
but you're still not utilizing it? Is there a reason for that? Today, we offer semi-autonomous driving with our autopilot feature. Um, and we've just released a new version of that, uh, version 8.0. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll keep improving that um, and making, really the, the whole goal here is safety. It's got multiple cameras, multiple sensors, um, and it gives us over time the ability to get there. However, uh, we need to develop the software to take advantage of those, uh, of those sensors and create pure autonomous driving. And we need to work with regulators to do that too. Semi-autonomous, what can it do without you? So I could summon my car from my garage, meet it in uh, the driveway, um, and we can get on a highway and it will follow the, uh, follow the road and steer itself. It'll keep itself a safe distance from other cars. Uh, it'll sense uh, any uh, impending need to brake in an emergency fashion. It can switch, uh, change lanes. What happens if like an animal runs in front? As we perfect the sensors and the ability to sense those sort of things, which is one of the reasons we've just updated the car hardware, so we get a 360 view of the car, it can, it, it can address use cases like that. Do you think that um, driverless cars are, are eventually kind of the way of the future? I think that, um, that because all of us are motivated by safety, in every year more than a million people die worldwide in auto accidents, that, um, uh, that when we bring the kind of technology that is already in airplanes to cars and the accident rate starts to approach zero, that's good for all of us. And so it's really the safety that's going to drive the adoption of autonomous technologies. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now let's take a look at 